Thanks for viewing. Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring, Part 1. In this lesson, Joe Quadratic will solve quadratic equations by factoring. Joe's math teacher taught him quadratic equations that have one or two solutions can be separated into two linear expressions, which can then be used to find the solutions of the equation. In this lesson, Joe will show us how to do it. Warning, warning, warning. Finding factors of quadratic expressions are only intermediate steps to finding solutions to quadratic equations. If you stop after finding the factors, you will be wrong. From finding the factors, the solutions are counterintuitive, which means not what you would expect at first glance. Be careful. Be vigilant. Joe remembers from Algebra 1 finding the product of two binomials by using FOIL, but the box method was a lot more logical to him. Each term from one binomial goes on the top of each column of the box, and each term from the other binomial goes at the front or left side of each row of the box. Each term in each binomial is thus multiplied by each, each term in the other expression. The two x terms are combined. The product of these two binomials becomes the trinomial x squared minus 2x minus 15. Factoring is working backwards from finding the product by multiplying. In other words, we start with a trinomial or maybe even a quadratic binomial and find the factors of that product. The equation has to be equal to zero on one side to solve by factoring. If one side does not equal zero, we need to make it zero to be able to do this. And for this first problem, let's start with the trinomial n squared plus 2n minus 3, which is already set equal to zero. Joe's first step is to place the n squared term in the upper left-hand corner of the box and the numeric term, negative 3, in the right-hand corner of the box, lower right-hand corner. Working backwards, we place an n at the top of the first column and at the side of the first row. Now comes the challenging part. We're looking for the two numbers that multiply together equal negative 3 and, when added together, equal the coefficient of n, which is 2. The systematic approach to finding the factors is to create two columns. The first one for the factors of that number in the lower right corner, in this case negative 3, and another column for a list of sums of those factors. The only two combinations of integers to get negative 3 are negative 1 times 3 or negative 3 times 1. We list the factors in the factors column. The next step is to get the sums of the two factors and place them in the column under sums, so we just add them together. And here are the numbers added together. This is the combination that has a sum of 2. So we put the number factors here as the arrows show. So we have positive 3 on top and negative 1 on the side. And part of the check is to multiply them out. And we see that the factors are quantity n plus 3 times the quantity n minus 1. We write them out below the original trinomial. So our solutions are 3 and negative 1. Danger, danger, danger. That is not the answer. We need to find the values of n that make the equation true. We split the binomials into two separate equations. We solve the equation on the left, and n equals negative 3 is on the left, and n equals 1 is going to be the right equation. And to check, we need to put each calculated solution into the original trinomial to assure that our solutions are correct. The confirmed solutions are n equals negative 3 and n equals 1. Joe will next solve this equation by factoring n squared plus 10x plus 27 equals 0. He sets up the box. He lists all the possible factors of 27 under the factors column. Now under the sums column, he adds the two factors together. He looks for the sums that add up to the x term in the trinomial he's factoring and sees that none match up, meaning that it looks like there is no real solution, no number he can replace for x and have this be a true statement. He could check by graphing as well, or maybe even the quadratic formula, which we'll get to later. Joe will solve this equation by factoring 3a squared equals 18a. The first thing Joe does is to make one side equal to 0, and he does that by taking the 18a term on the right side and moving it over to the left side. So now he has 3a squared minus 18a equals 0. He next sets up his box, and since it's a binomial, he needs only a 1 by 2 box. 
Both terms go into their places inside the box. He next factors out an A and puts it on the left side of the box. He puts the two terms with the A divided out of them on the top of the box and those terms would be 3A and negative 18. He now rewrites the equation as A times quantity 3A minus 18 equals 0. He separates the two factors into two equations, A equals 0 and 3A minus 18 equals 0. One of the solutions is A equals 0. We need to solve for the other solution. He moves negative 18 to the right side. He has 3a equals 18. He solves for a by dividing both sides by 3 to get a, a equals 6 and that is the other solution. So Joe's solutions are a equals 0 and a equals 6 and this is our answer in set notation. Let's look at this equation, x squared minus 4x equals 12. Stop the video and solve this equation by factoring, then restart it to see if your solutions match those of Joe's. Hint, set one side of the equation equal to zero first. Joe's first step is to get one side equal zero, and that is most easily done by moving the 12 on the right side over the left side. Now he has x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. The x squared term goes in the upper left corner and the numeric term, which is negative 12, in the lower right hand corner. We place the factors of x squared in their proper places on the top and to the side. He sets the columns for factors and sums. He now lists the factors of negative 12. Looks like there are about, there are about 6 of them. Next, he adds the two factors together in the sums column. He looks up the x term in the quadratic equation. Its coefficient is negative 4. Is there a match in the sums column? Yes, right here. Both the coefficient of x and the sums of the factor are negative 4. That means that these two numbers, negative 6 and 2, are the factors that will work. He inserts these factors of negative 12 to the top and to the side of the box here. We see that the terms in these corners of the box sum to negative 4x, proving that the factors are quantity x plus 2 and quantity x minus 6. We rewrite the quadratic equation in factored form as quantity x plus 2 times quantity x minus 6 equals 0. Do not stop here. The solutions are not 2 and negative 6. We separate into two equations, x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 6 equals 0. Solving both equations for x, x equals negative 2 and x equals 6. He rewrites the answer in set notation here. He can substitute negative 2 in for x and it works as well as substituting in 6 for x, therefore two solutions. Let's look at one last problem, a multiple choice question about finding solutions by factoring. Which are the solutions to the quadratic equation quantity x plus 3 times quantity x minus 4 equals 0? When you see a problem like this, the test writer is setting you up. You see the 3 here matching the 3 and the answer here and the negative 4 matching the negative 4. The test writer is wanting you to bite on this one, but it's not the right answer. Remember? the danger 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 counterintuitive to solve you will need to write two separate equations one for each binomial one equation is x plus 3 equals 0 and the other equation is x minus 4 equals 0 to solve the left equation we subtract 3 from both sides so x equals negative 3 and for the right equation we add 4 to solve for x so x equals 4 our answer is C don't be tricked while this video has shown the basic concept and practice of solving by factoring and has worked out a few problems, most students need a lot more practice to be able to factor well. Get the practice and be successful. This has been Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring, Part 1. Part 2 will have some more Solving by Factoring examples. Thanks for viewing.